It's a chilly, 50 degree day, windy. The setting is the UK, London. You're wearing a pink coat. You're taking a nice stroll with your friend. You're on a lovely vacation for spring break. And you walk by the London Bridge. Oh, what a sight. It's breathtaking. You must sketch it. You get out your notebook and your pencil and pens and you start sketching. Oh, how beautiful. How do I get those cables to be the right size? Your friend says, how long do you think this will take? You say, don't worry, only a couple of minutes. You go back to sketching. You draw the base. You draw the water. Wait, how how is this line not lining up with this line? Wait, do those like... Your friend gets restless. How much longer do you think you'll be? Not long at all. <laughs> you draw a line, then erase it, then draw it, then erase it. Your friend is hungry. God damn it, Nicole, let me draw this. I like literally two seconds. Hello and happy quarantine. My name is Kelsey and welcome back to my channel. I'm here on my homeland, Long Island, New York, filming this outside on a very beautiful, slightly windy day because I just needed to get out for a second. I wanted to keep up the momentum of me posting because I had posted two videos in two weeks of my design series, which if you haven't already seen it, you can go check them out right here. And if you're waiting for episode three, I definitely will be posting that soon. So hit the little bell to be notified next time I post a video because I have no posting schedule, clearly. This is the second time I'm filming this video because I thought it would be a great idea to film while I was away in California visiting my boyfriend for a little bit. And here's how it went. I literally walked around for like 30 minutes trying to find a cute, quiet place that I could film. Not only did I get cut called twice, but also because I am very terrified of the homeless people here. Then I went back to my boyfriend's apartment where he has a little outdoor atrium in the middle of his apartment complex. So I am ecstatic and loving this. Until my camera died. So then I decided to lower my standards and go to his little teeny tiny balcony outside of his bedroom. Oh my God. Where all you can hear is the sound of blaring horns and trains passing. I expected it to be a little bit quieter. After all that, I sat down during quarantine to finally edit this video and every single shot was blurry. How does anybody like that? And with that, I present the only part of the video that was worth saving. Comment below, am I about to be murdered in this creepy tunnel right now? Yep, that's all I got. Anyways, the point of this video was to talk about sketching. I really love sketching, especially when I'm on vacation or even just when I'm by myself and I'm relaxing because not only do I find it really therapeutic and relaxing, I think it's a great way to improve your skills, not just in drawing itself, but in design as a whole. Even if you don't think it directly applies, having good hand drawing skills is so important to you if you want to become an interior designer or any kind of designer or artist in general. Especially in the age of computers, it's still so important to have good hand drawing skills because you never know when you're going to have to sit down in front of a client and sketch out an idea quickly or if you need to, I don't know, doodle on someone in a bar. So I thought it would be a good idea to share with you some of my top tips on how to improve your sketching and hand drawing skills. There's a lady walking past me and she's going to watch me. I'm really awkward. First tip is to draw from life as much as possible. And what I mean by that is to look at something and draw it in real life. I do like to draw from photographs if I'm traveling or if I'm on a plane or somewhere where I don't have a subject to sketch, but I really like to draw from life as much as possible because I find that this is the best way for you to improve your sketching skills. Why? Because when you're sketching from real life, you look at things in a different way than you normally would. You can see more detail than you normally would in a building. It helps with your lights and shadows. You might find that it is more difficult to sketch from life than from a photograph for a couple of reasons. First, obviously, subjects move. Even if it's an inanimate object, the sun is always moving. So your lights and shadows are gonna be moving. Another thing is sometimes I find it a little harder to get my proportions right because I'm not looking at something that's flat. I'm looking for, at something that is three dimensional that is right in front of me. And so getting the correct angles could be more difficult. Also, obviously in real life, there's no real borders. If you're looking at a photograph, you know exactly where it's gonna start and where it's gonna end in real life. 
Obviously, you don't have that. So it could be difficult for you to pinpoint where's the center gonna be, or you spend all your time drawing one window and it looks so pretty and you realize you don't have room on the page for anything else. I don't know if I'll ever make a video where my glasses don't reflect everything. Okay, next blind tip. Try to use pens over pencils. When I was younger, my favorite medium was pencils and color pencils. It's obviously really great because if you draw something, you can erase it. And then you can draw one line and then erase it because it's not at the right angle and then draw it again and then erase it again and just keep doing that for 30 hours and never complete any project in your life. And by pen, I don't mean a blick ballpoint pen that you used to use in high school. Also, if anybody uses blue pen, seriously evaluate your life. What I mean are artist pens. So you have a couple of different options. One that I really like and that is super cheap and easy to get basically at any hardware store, not <laughs> hardware store, at any arts and crafts store, you know, like a Hobby Lobby or Michaels or whatever weird stuff you guys have in Jersey. And what I use a lot of the time is a Pilot razor pen. It kind of looks like this and you can get them for literally a dollar fifty and so many places They're so easy and I have like a million of them and they also come in a couple different colors And if you really want to splurge you can invest in a set of Micron pens and these are a lot better quality. They're a little bit more expensive You could probably get a pack of them for like twenty dollars, but these have lasted me a little bit bit. Um, I usually use the thinner ones uh, more than I use the thicker ones, but you can also get these individually for cheaper for, yeah, like $1.50 or $2 each, something like that. I don't really know. And these are the ones that I carry around when I go sketching. I like that I can use the smaller ones for thin lines and more detail, and then I have the thick ones if I need to shade something in. I wasn't going to mention this, but these are the kind of notebooks that I usually buy when I'm going out and sketching. And this one is, I would say like a medium square size. I don't know why I like getting the square size, because I feel like when I go to frame something, I really like the shape of a square photo in a frame but I have one that's about half the size of this it's like super tiny and I like to take that when I'm traveling on a plane or I'm traveling somewhere where I'm not gonna be able to carry a lot of things one thing that a sketching professor told me once was that she likes to buy a different little tiny sketching notebook every time she goes on a new trip and it's kind of like her sketching diary and I thought that was such a great idea I don't travel that much and I don't sketch that much so I don't have quite as much to fill up an entire notebook up but I think that's a really cute idea and I started compiling all of my sketches from one place into one notebook. So if I go to flip back, I kind of like reminisce on the places I've been. This one in particular is a lot of school work and like random little sketches that I have. Yeah, just like different places I've been around Philadelphia while I was in class and studying at Drexel. Back to the pen situation. Pens simply build your confidence. If you have a pencil, you have to constantly and trying to be a perfectionist, you're not gonna get anywhere. First of all, it helps me move quicker. And second of all, I feel like the drawings just come out better. My third tip is time yourself. Now this one is like a little weird and I honestly rarely do this and I hate timing myself, but this was an exercise that we used to do back in design school. It was really just to increase our confidence in drawing. You have three minutes to draw a subject and so when you put that line down, you can't get rid of it. You can't erase it. You just need to put that line down and keep going. This is especially great if you are someone that wants to sketch while you're traveling. Also, you don't want to be in a client sketching out an idea and sitting there with your little ruler drawing horizon lines and vantage points. No one has time for that. Practice. The first time, give yourself a minute. The second time, give yourself three minutes. And it really will build your sketching confidence. Tip number four, don't discard anything. If you have been following all of my previous tips already, then you're gonna make a hell of a lot of mistakes. As an artist myself, I know that it's very easy for you to be protective and embarrassed about your artwork. And trust me, I have notebooks full of things that I wouldn't even dare let people cross their eyes on. And I used to get in the habit of if I didn't like something or I kept drawing something over and over again that I would just get rid of it. I didn't want it in my sight. I only wanted to keep the best one. And yeah, that makes sense. But as I've grown and as I've gotten a little bit better, I really like keeping all of my work just to see how far I really have come. It's nice to look back on how far you've come and the things that you've done in the past and it really motivates you to keep moving forward. My next tip is to get uncomfortable. And what I mean by that is basically just draw something that you don't normally practice drawing all the time. For example, if you're really good at drawing bowls of fruit, ask yourself, where am I getting all of these bowls of fruit from? And then go outside and draw a building. Just remember that any kind of practice is practice, regardless of what you're drawing. I'll give you a personal example. When I was younger, I really loved drawing portraits. That's not true. I really wanted to draw portraits and I really envied people that could draw portraits really well. Faces are freaking hard. And I was always okay. After I graduated high school, I didn't 
really draw that much, maybe here and there. So then when I finally transferred to Drexel for the interior design program and started drawing a little bit more, and just from sketching more, I really started to enjoy it. And I started to do it in my everyday life. I would walk around campus with my sketchbook and I would sit down for one to two hours at a time and sketch a building. But I was just sketching architecture. After practicing my sketches for some time, I decided to pivot a little bit and try and draw a portrait. Honestly, I was shocked. Just comparing how my skills were before to what I was able to produce now with no actual training on drawing this specific subject. So the moral of this whole story is that any kind of practice is practice. And now on to my sixth and final tip, practice always makes perfect. Duh. The more you sketch, the better you will get. Thank you guys again for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos. Hit the little bell so you can know when I post my next video. Also, if you have any other ideas of videos I can make in the future, please let me know down in the comments. I'm already running out of ideas. How do people do this? Take some time to renew yourself and to relax, but also take this time to do something that you've been putting off for such a long time, like making an interior design YouTube channel. Bye.